What's up guys, Brian here with BPS Customs. Now you might notice that this video looks hopefully a little bit better than a lot of the footage that I've been shooting on my channel recently. That's because I just picked up the Sigma 18-35 to art lens and we're going to talk a little bit about it in this video. Now I do not pretend to be a camera expert. I do not pretend to be a lens expert. Most of what I've learned about cameras and lenses has come from reading things online, watching YouTube videos, and talking to people like my brother. You can find his Instagram right here. He is a nature photographer. He knows an absolute buttload about camera stuff that I would never have known if he didn't tell me. Now while he's not a videographer and his specialties do not lie in choosing the best lens for YouTube, he was able to educate me about ISO, shutter speed, and aperture in ways that I really didn't think about before. So why does that all matter? Well, the Sigma 18-35 has come to be known as the YouTuber lens. Now the reason for that is because it is a fantastic lens at shooting indoors or, or outdoors, but in a controlled environment. Somewhere where you have lighting that you could position and, and control the brightness of. Somewhere where your subject isn't going to be running around with super fast motion. Somewhere, something where you're not going to need a, an enormously long zoom to capture action. Basically, YouTube is shot in a controlled environment. I'm indoors. I'm not moving around a whole lot. You just need to point the camera at me and it needs to work. Now, what the best lens is for that is something where you can achieve a bokeh effect in the background, like you see right here, and also a lens where you can pick up an enormous amount of detail using a low ISO setting. Well, how do you achieve that? Well, the Sigma lens comes with a maximum aperture of 1.8, which is extremely large for almost any lens. Now, when it comes to aperture, the lower the number, the bigger the aperture. Basically, it's telling you how wide the shutter is going to open when it's capturing an image. Now, the Sigma lens, like I said, has one of the largest apertures on the market. However, it is aided by the fact that the lens cannot mount directly to my Lumix G7. So what do you do? You could buy an adapter for $20 on eBay, or you could use something like a Metabone Speed Booster, which not only allows the physical mounting of the lens to the body of the camera, but also provides an additional stop of light. So basically, my f1.8 lens is now an f1.1 lens. This allows you to shoot with an extremely shallow depth of field, sometimes almost a problematically small depth of field. Sometimes you could be shooting an image where the parts of the same product, even if it's a very small product like a cell phone, are out of focus just because they're slightly behind. Products are three-dimensional. Sometimes you want to capture the entire thing in one shot. So what do you do? You can bump up the aperture to say 3.2 or 4.0, which is what I'm shooting on right now. Just because you have the ability to shoot at f1.1 doesn't mean you necessarily need to do that all the time. The biggest benefit though of having the availability of a very wide aperture means that you don't necessarily need to shoot with a high ISO. Now ISO is basically the ability to adjust the sensor's sensitivity to light. Now the higher the ISO number, the more sensitive it's going to be. But because we have such a wide aperture on this lens, that means you do not need to shoot with a high ISO. Why is that beneficial? Well, basically, you could pick up an enormous amount of detail with a very low ISO setting. The higher the ISO setting, yes, the more light you're going to see in an image and the brighter it's going to be, but also you get the chance of overexposing some areas of your image and also it adds grain. So ideally, you want to be shooting with the lowest ISO possible while still getting a usable image. Now, that's not to say you should go for an extremely dark shot, although that is preferable to overexposure. An overexposed image cannot be recovered, whereas a dark image can be recovered in post. So for doing product shots, where I am quite often up close and personal with things like motherboards, graphics cards, and cases, the ideal situation for somebody like me is to be able to isolate the thing that I'm shooting against a background of blurriness or bokeh. And you achieve that by using that shallow depth of field. This really gets the viewer's attention focused on the specific image that you want them to see without having any distractions in the background. It's a way to isolate a part of a product shot without specifically saying, hey, look at this right here with all kinds of arrows and stuff pointing all over. So now that I've given my rudimentary class on lenses and how they work, I do want to apologize for the audio in this video. I, I find it very likely that although I do have actually a brand new Sennheiser shotgun microphone mounted on top of the camera, there's probably going to be some echo in this video's audio. 
And that's because I'm actually talking to a very bare wall right now. And I hope to have that remedied in the future. I'm gonna put some uh, acoustic padding around, maybe some bass traps in the corners, and we'll get that situation straightened out. But this video, I wanted to specifically focus on the new lens. And I hope you guys notice the difference between my old videos and this video, because I really feel like having this lens now and having the knowledge that I've accumulated over the past you know, couple years, I guess, should really help bring the channel to the next level as far as getting you guys the best and most accurate information and shots of new products, new builds, and things of that nature. So let me know what you guys think of the use of the Sigma 18 to 35 in this video. Does it do it for you or do you not really care? Also, get subscribed to the channel if you're not already. Check out down in the video description for a link to my merchandise store where you could find mugs and shirts and hoodies and things of that nature. And also find me on Twitter, BPS underscore customs. I'd be glad to answer any questions that I can about the Sigma lens or about computers in general. I guess that's more my area of expertise. Thanks for watching this video, guys, as always, and I'll see you in the next one.